HRC, 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 Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader Church. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Hey everybody, it's coming back to pick back up where we left off on the understanding the covenant of the land of Israel. That's in Yache. We had Ahaya uh, took us on a nice journey to understanding the the magnitude. Yes, the the, the sincerity and the seriousness of his walk and severity. Yes. To to attain unto getting into this tower, which is the church of Alahayam. So we thank him for it and want to continue where we left off. We had looked at the 400 year prophecy that had happened of old, how the Egyptians were judged, and the people came out with a great substance, which was the physical substance at that time, the gold and whatnot. And we were looking at the mystery that is going to happen again here in the end of the world. Because that prophecy was twofold. It happened then. The fullness of it is coming here now when that seed, Yache, and his seed will be in all Israel, the true Israel, that those are the Israelites by spirit and truth, those are the Jews inwardly. And we're going to look at that prophecy to see that it's coming again a second time in Jeremiah chapter 23. We're going to pick up from verse 1 again and we'll go through it. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 1 Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith Ahaya. Therefore thus saith Ahaya Elohim Ichriyala, against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith Ahaya. The evil doers is the, the leading away of the flock from the righteousness of the law and the obedience of the faith and bearing fruits of the Spirit. Amen. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, whether I have driven them. And we know this, I always touches on the remnant. As we had learned in the overview on the promises and the covenant, that it was always meant for a remnant of Israel to be saved in the end. All right, continue. And will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And there we see, we're going to actually be bearing the fruits of the Spirit and operating in all righteousness when we go back into the land this time. And we will abide there, we wouldn't get rooted back out like we did in former times. And that's how we know the prophecy was not finished at that time, because right. we didn't um, get to stay in the land. Uh, at that time, and the prophecy said we'll go to inherit it, and that's it. Uh, it didn't stay that way, therefore we know that it has to happen again for it to come to its fullness and be complete. And we'll be bearing fruit, we'll be multiplying, the nation will get increased because we'll be living under the dominion of Yache. And we'll truly increase as we'll beget thousands of children as Enoch prophesied. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, saith Ahaya. Now it's interesting that he said he would set up shepherds over them because the pastors had not been feeding us. They did not visit us. They weren't giving us the food that we needed. But there's coming a time when he will set up shepherds over them that will teach them to not be lacking. And we know if we're lacking, we're lacking in the fruits of Allah. I am the fruit and lacking in good works. We'll be working on righteousness under these shepherds. And Paul talks about this. And the prophets talk about it. If we look at Romans, actually, chapter 10, verse 13 to 15, this is good news that these shepherds will be teaching the people. Romans chapter 10, verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Adonai shall be saved. Indeed, whoever shall call upon Yache and Shiaka shall be saved. This is the first step to renewing what had been lost, to bring in the sheepfold back together, to bring them back onto the good shepherd. Right, continue. 
how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? We didn't even know his name was Yache. Right. We had been told his name were other things. We didn't even know Ahaya's name. We had been told his name were other things. And now he's been gracious to cause us to know his name and his son's name. Mm-hmm. And how shall they hear without a preacher? This is what Ahaya has been gracious to give the opportunity for people to do, to preach in his name. Because someone has to bring the good news. Mm-hmm. Continue. And how shall they preach except they be sent? And we can always test if a person has been sent, if this preacher indeed is a preacher of Allah Hayyam by the fruit that they bear. Because he said you shall know them by their fruits. Continue. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good news. And the gospel of peace is Yache, for he is our peace in Allah Hayyam, to the Jew first and to the Gentile. All nations may be saved. If we jump to Isaiah chapter 30, it was prophesied of old that though we had been lost, there will come a time when he would bring true teachers to teach us the truth and bring us back unto him. Right? Isaiah chapter 30 verse 20. And though Adonai give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. These are the shepherds that he's talking about that are going to feed his flock, to feed them with the sin sand milk of the word, and when they're ready to give them meat, to understand the prophecies. Continue. And thine ears shall hear a word behind me, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. And this shows that this is a working of the spirit. The spirit's be drawing you closer. Yes. And when he talks about when you turn to the right hand and turn to the left, that's the, the correction that you're going to be experiencing. That we all experience. Right. Because the spirit, we, we learn in the law, we make a mistake, the spirit get us back in line. Like, no, this is what the law says. This is what you need to do. This is the right way. Go this direction. So it's, it's not just physical people coming and speaking to you, but it's the spirit that work it. Right. And those that hear, because Yache always says, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Right. Those that hear, there's a response that comes. You hear this voice telling you, this is the right way, walk ye in it. And then the change begins in you. You start to hate iniquity. Right. And that's why he says what well, he says there in verse 22. You shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver. And the ornament of thy molten images of gold. Thou shalt cast them away as a menstruous cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, Get thee hence. Now this verse is important because when he says, You shall defile also the covering of thy graven images. Mm -hmm. This is because you're going to cast all those wicked thoughts away like a menstruous cloth. Because they come from hearkening to idols. This is how much we will hate iniquity. This is how much we would hate all the unrighteousness that we thought and that we operated in. And that's how we know it's the spirit of Yahweh working because he has nothing to do with iniquity. That's right. And we will put on his spirit and say, get thee his. Righteous people will have nothing to do with evil. They have no pleasure in it. And this is what that voice telling us, this is the way walking in it will inspire us to do. Because it's Yahweh taking over. Removing that covenant of the idols to make us operate in the right way. To give us understanding on when it says those shepherds that will feed us. We'll be getting fed with the right things. Because those shepherds that are sent, they're going to be sent by the good shepherd himself. They're going to be ordained. Because he says, how can they have a preacher unless he be sent, as he said in Romans. And you can always know who Yahweh is actually sent by the fruits that they bear. As we talked about in Matthew chapter 7 verse 14 to about 20. 20, 21. Yeah. Uh, let's continue with Jeremiah chapter 23. About, about yeah, verse 5 now. Okay. Jeremiah 23 verse 5. Behold the days come, saith Ahaya. This is how we know there's a future prophecy. Right? That I will raise unto the way the righteous branch. That's the Ache. He is the branch. Right? And the king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. 
and in his days Yoda shall be saved, and Ichiriala shall dwell safely, and this is his name, whereby he shall be called Ahaya our righteousness. The word uh, Ahaya our righteousness is Ahaya Zidokwa Punua. Jeremiah 23 verse 7 Therefore behold the days come, saith Ahaya, that they shall no more say, Ahaya liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. And this is how we can further tell, this is future prophecy, the days come, there's uh -huh. going to come a time, his name is going to be magnified on the earth again. But Ahaya liveth, which brought up, and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, mm -hmm. and from all countries, whether I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. And there we see the prophecy must be fulfilled. That's right. First, you see, we had to be scattered because he's going to bring us from the north country mm -hmm. and brought us from all the countries where he had driven us. And this time, he said, I have brought and led the seed of the house of Israel. That's right. And the seed, the true seed of the house of Israel. All those have the seed, which is Yacha, in them. The house of Israel shall dwell in their land safely. These prophecies will be fulfilled. And we can partake if we are willing and obedient. He had, it's a part of the covenant. He promised in the testimony that if we are willing and obedient, we shall eat of the land. We are going to partake in that um, resurrection. If we are here to be gracious and we are alive when he comes, he is going to accept us and will not be cast off. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 to 20, he talks about that. And we have to be willing, willing and obedient, circumcising our hearts and humbling ourselves, and be willing to do that which is right, that we may partake in this opportunity to live in the land, and partake in his blessing of his spirit and eternal life. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, and let us reason together, say Ahiah. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. What does the word willing mean, please? It's H14. Willing means to breathe after. That is figuratively to be acquiescent. Consent, rest, content. Will or be willing. You know, it is to consent. We have to come at this wholeheartedly to partake in it. To yield even, yeah. right? To yield too. Yeah, you have to give over to it. To desire. That's right. This is what we have to covet after him. That we may be saved. And to whom he yields, to whom he serve. That's right. And uh, what was that? Romans, Romans chapter six. 6. Yeah. So. And uh, what does the word obedient mean as well, please? It's H8085. It means to hear intelligently, often with implication of attention, obedience, mm. etc. To whom you yield is whom you obey, as he said, to give attention to it. Constitutively, to tell, etc. Attentively, call, gather, together. Carefully, certainly, consent, mm -hmm. consider, be content. No, that's interesting. We have to be content with it. We can't have any other loss. That's right. right? Declare diligently, discern, mm -hmm. give ear. To listen, faith coming by hearing. Cause to let or make to hear. Mm -hmm. To hearken, listen, be obedient, obey. That's interesting. Obedience comes with hearing, that's right. evidently. It's amazing the word in itself tells us what it takes to obey. Right. You have to listen. Right. Listen with your heart, especially to give into it. But to, you have to be willing. Your desire has to be completely into it, and you have to really listen. If we do that, we shall eat of the land. What else does he say? If we, if we don't do it, we have a, a reward for that as well. But if you refuse and rebel, he shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of Ahaya has spoken it. Children of Israel, this is what's set before us. Life or death, the same way Mushi told our fathers in Deuteronomy chapter 30. Right. The same opportunity is before us. 
we have to be attentive to this. Now that we have some understanding of what it takes to get into the land and eat of it, let's look at what was shown to Ezra to get understanding of this 400 year prophecy to know when these things will be. Started uh, 2nd Edris 7 and 25. And therefore, Edris, for the empty are empty things, and for the full are the full things. Behold, the time shall come that these tokens which I have told thee shall come to pass, and the bride shall appear, and she coming forth shall be seen that now is withdrawn from the earth. In the latter times, Yahche is going to bring the church with him, and she's literally going to be revealed, as was shown to Isaiah in these last days. And whosoever is delivered from the foresaid evil shall see my wonders. For my son Yahche shall be revealed with those that be with him. Those that be with him are Yahche's holy angels that are going to come with him, as he revealed to Peter. And they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. So it goes right into the 400 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's about Genesis 13, right. 15 and 13. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> the people that remain and will rejoice within 400 years are those that endure the peril of that time and have kept themselves by having works and faith when they have believed towards the Almighty. And they are going to be blessed, because everyone that shall be saved and be able to escape by his works and his faith when he believed shall be preserved from the perils, and shall see Ahia's salvation in his land. And Ahia's salvation is Yache, so they shall actually see Yache coming in Ahia's land and within his borders. The people that are going to see his salvation in his land and within his borders are going to be the inhabitants of Jerusalem because Zechariah was shown Ahiah is going to save the tents of Judah first so that the other inhabitants of Jerusalem and the house of David does not magnify themselves against them. But also all the inhabitants of Jerusalem are going to be there getting delivered and David's children are going to be as Allah I am destroying the nations that come against Jerusalem. And you can confirm these things to be true, that it will be the inhabitants of Jerusalem there within the borders, by the fact that Ezra was shown that those that would be left within the borders would be his people, which are those inhabitants of Jerusalem, who went into the Babylonian captivity with him. So you have these precepts, in what was revealed to Ezra and Zechariah to understand that the people that would make it within the borders to see Ahiah's salvation in regards to the children of Israel, that is, would be the inhabitants of Jerusalem that have faith and works, wherein they have believed to preserve them from the perils of the times to come by keeping the commandments and bearing the fruits of the Spirit by faith in Yahweh. Now we see Yahweh is going to strengthen the house of Judah, and we understand he's going to strengthen them to fight when Yahweh comes. But also, Yahweh is going to save the house of Joseph too. So there's the deliverance to come for the ten tribes after Yahweh comes down to fight and defend those that remain. So to get the story in context, Yahweh is going to come with his host from heaven as Isaiah and Ezra and others were shown. And when he's revealed, an innumerable multitude is going to be gathered to fight against him. And he's going to destroy them all without labor. And after he destroys those nations, he's going to defend those that remain. And the precepts show that the inhabitants of Jerusalem will be defended. And also, he said his people that remain. So believers of all nations will be defended by him after he destroys the nations that are coming against him when he comes in his glory. Now after he does all this, he's going to gather a peaceable multitude unto him. And Ezra saw how some were bound, some were sorry, some were glad, and some were offered. 
and by the precepts, the peaceable multitude that's gathered unto him are the ten tribes. And therein we see he's also going to save the house of Joseph as he said he will do. Now, mind you, all these things have to come to pass before the 400 years are finished because Ezra was shown Yahshua would be revealed within 400 years. So he's going to come back in the clouds to destroy the nations that come against him and defend those of his people that remain in his land and within his borders and then call the ten tribes unto him after the war before the 400 years are complete. And this is just like it was in the Exodus because he came down to deliver his people before the 400 years were complete at that time as well. Be sure to reference the end times playlist for further edification on what else is going to transpire within these 400 years. It's full of mercy and kindness indeed to give us this opportunity here in this end time to get it right. So with that, just the uh, lesson to just make sure we all understand that as Israelites, we have to be in Yache to partake in the covenant of the land of Canaan. And also, the Gentiles that are listening, admonition for you as well to make sure you're walking in the faith of Abraham and believing in Yache keeping the commandments, bearing the fruits of the Spirit, so that we all may have this opportunity together. And with that, we uh, beseech you, brothers and sisters, pray for us unto Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya, in the name of Yache, Meshiaka, that he may deliver us from all evil, the same way we pray for you. And we also encourage you to visit the website. Ahaya has given us the website, so we have information online, Lots of information on there, books and whatnot, and questions, comments, please email us, write a comment in the comment box, you know, we uh, look forward to hearing from you, and we look forward to the opportunity to grow together, and we hope you've been enjoying this time as much as we have thus far. Yes, indeed. And we praise Ahaya. With that, so, anything else? That's it, man. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Peace be unto you. Yes. HRC, 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 HRC,